Last week on Connects, Republican Congressman Dave Riker joined us to talk about the debate over health care reform, and he had some strong things to say about AARP. Joining me now to answer some of those charges is AARP Advocacy Director Ingrid McDonald. Well, Ingrid, thanks for being here. Let's play first uh, some of the comments that we heard from the congressman uh, about AARP and, and his issues regarding uh, health care, where AARP stands, and his view. Let's take a look. Really, when you take a look at uh, the reasons that AARP gives for uh, the $500 billion uh, reduction in senior benefits, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me as to why AARP is supporting this move. Um, you have, have a little the, controversy here, a little debate going well, on with AARP? You know, it's, it's just for me, it's, it's a matter of, uh, it, it just raises my, my investigative antenna. All right, so uh, the congressman had a couple of issues that he had raised regarding AARP support of the uh, health reform measure. One of them had to do with uh, what he sees as a reduction in uh, Medicare uh, that he believes that AARP is supporting. And the other one uh, has to do with what he sees almost as, as a conflict of interest since AARP provides some other uh, services for for those that are members that he thinks uh, that since they support this, that they're really advocating it because uh, they're going to make money off it, or AARP will make money. Right. Off it. So there's really no foundation to the congressman's claims. AARP is a nonprofit, nonpartisan, membership-based organization. So we take positions based on what's good for our members and not some kind of financial calculus that the congressman is suggesting. And when it comes to Medicare, AARP has been the major proponent of the Medicare program virtually since its inception. And the idea that AARP would support policy that's bad for Medicare or that cuts Medicare benefits um, is really just inconceivable. And I think, Enrique, what's going on here is it's really part of a broader effort on behalf of opponents of health care reform to derail reform by spreading myths and misinformation really intended to confuse and scare seniors in particular, because seniors are important because uh, they vote in disproportionate numbers. And I'm sure you remember this summer when this kind of came to its height, where different opponents of reform were making this wild claim that health reform would lead to death panels that would be set up by the government and that would decide whether older people would live or die. Now, that was just ridiculous. And I think most people saw right through it. Uh, what about his claim that there would be cuts in Medicare under this, uh, under this plan? There, under the House bill and the Senate version, there, there is no cuts to guaranteed Medicare benefits uh, outlined in the bill or any increase in cost sharing for Medicare beneficiaries. Uh, there are three major ways that the bill actually improves and strengthens Medicare. So the first is the biggest gap in Medicare coverage that is most frustrating uh, to older people is in the Medicare Part D prescription drug benefit, the so-called dreaded donut hole. And this is a major step forward, is that the House bill would close the donut hole over time, beginning immediately. And that's really important for the 22% of Medicare beneficiaries here in Washington state who fall into the donut hole every year and who are faced with a difficult decision about whether to skimp or skimp on their medications. So that's number one. Number two has to do with physician reimbursement. We're hearing more and more Medicare beneficiaries saying, I can't find a doctor who will accept new Medicare patients, and that's an access problem. So moving in tandem with this health care bill is a separate legislation that will prevent an additional 21% cut in physician reimbursement for Medicare, and that's hugely important for seniors. The third, and really this is where some of the rhetoric about Medicare cuts and uh, benefit cuts come from, is the bill includes measures to strengthen Medicare over time by making it more efficient. Um, that it does it primarily in three ways. It's, it's not direct cuts to benefits. What it is, is making the program more efficient by cracking down on fraud and abuse, you know, phony billing, phony providers, uh, other savings having to do with hospital reimbursement, uh, for example, in incentives to encourage hospitals to reduce preventable readmissions, and other savings that the hospital industry has come to the table and already agreed to. And the third has to do with Medicare Advantage and reducing 
subsidies to private insurance companies that offer Medicare Advantage. And Medicare Advantage is what you can pay extra for that, so uh, those that have the money to do so. You, pe people on Medicare can choose between regular fee-for-service Medicare, which is what most Medicare beneficiaries choose, or they can opt for a Medicare Advantage plan where they're going to be limited uh, what doctors and hospitals they can go to uh, for a set monthly fee. Okay, Ingrid McDonald, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.